cybercrime is on the rise in Australia and recent statistics that might be somewhat alarming. The Australian Cyber Security Centre says that more than one in three small businesses have been victim to cybercrime over the past year. In 2022, there were more than 75,000 reports of cybercrime. So it's probably a good time to look at how we as investors and also how Australian companies overall can be protected. Joining me via Zoom from Dubai is cybersecurity expert Ayman Aitani. Ayman, it's great to have you here. Thank you for your time. Those numbers I've quoted for Australia, are they a surprise to you? The numbers that you shared are high and I see them increasing further. The more devices are connected to the internet and uh, the offices, such as uh, computers, tablets, phones, security cameras, the more devices are connected to the internet, the more prone uh, they are uh, to, for uh, security attacks. And uh, the numbers uh, are continuing to grow. Amen. cybercrime is costing the economy billions of dollars. Small businesses facing this issue, adding up to the total cost. Why is cybercrime still a growing problem? Are we getting lazier with our security or are hackers just getting cleverer by the day? With any device that's connected to the internet, there's an opportunity for hackers to be able to get sensitive information. There are two types of attacks. One type of attack where the employee uh, is not at fault, where they are using their computer at their office day to day and hackers remotely access their devices through security holes that are not plugged. The second type where the employees need to be more careful, where there are people who impersonate a bank, a telecom provider. So the employee will get an email saying, I'm your bank and we need to need you to validate some information for me. Click on this link, add passwords and sensitive information and upload company documents. So that requires more vigilance and more attention from the employees and the business owners of the SMEs to make sure that the employees share information only with authorized and, and, and relevant authorities. And also phone calls, Ayman, sometimes from numbers that people don't recognize from various countries. The point you brought up about phone calls is very valid because there are many operators who try to call whether from within the country or outside the country, and they claim to be from a certain company and say, we'd like to validate certain information, and they ask you for sensitive information. And usually, you know, normal people always worry about their bank. They want to make sure that the bank is satisfied, that everything's well done and properly documented, the telco is okay with the information that they have. So they unknowingly share information with unauthorized personnel. So usually when the phone calls come in and uh, they're asking you for sensitive information, that's when you will need to ask them for validation, especially when if it's your bank calling and they're asking you for information that they should already have and same with the telco, that's the sign for you. Our audience is mostly investors. Many of them are high net worth individuals and company leaders. What is the core risk that we're talking about here? What types of attacks are we dealing with and what types of attacks pose the most risk? The main message I would have for the investors in the audience, uh, because I advise a lot of those investors, I also advise the founders who are pitching to investors. I rarely see cybersecurity high up uh, on the priority of the money they want to raise. They usually want to raise money to grow their marketing, grow their teams, expand to a new city. Cybersecurity is not up there. So for the investors in the audience, challenge your founders when they come in saying, how much of the money you're raising will be spent on cybersecurity. What type of training are you doing on this? What type of advisor are you bringing in? So this will raise the bar for protecting the business because the business will, will not only lose money, but it will also lose its reputation and potentially have their service taken down. So uh, all of those contribute to the growth or failure of the business. Ayman, I know you've dived into this topic multiple times back in the Middle East, but for all the Australian investors watching this today, what steps do you recommend for them to take to protect themselves? And all of these business and company leaders watching this today, what are the core steps they should follow to protect themselves? The investors tend to have quarterly reviews with the businesses that they've invested in. And as part of their KPIs for the quarter or the year is to include improvements in terms of cybersecurity. The additional investment and spend is not great. It's a small incremental increase that can significantly help protect the business and the employees in their business, and most importantly, their investment in that business. Will we ever eventually beat cyber criminals or will it inevitably get worse? Where do you see the future of that? With all the tech advancements that are taking place, and I know you've attended quite a few conferences recently on that particular topic, where do you see that down the line? Any device that's connected to the internet is prone to being taken over. 
and that will continue to be the case. And this is why there are software updates that protect you, and there are security holes that others take advantage of. So it's an inevitability that we will continue to be in this cycle, especially that more and more devices will continue to go online, and more and more of our business life and our content and our financial information will continue to be accessible through the internet, if not protected well. Ayman, before we wrap it up, if there are three main things that people should follow, whether they've opened up a business recently, whether they're planning to open a business down the track, what are three important things they should keep in mind to keep their businesses safe? Number one is uh, with the IT person or company that they're dealing with to buy their hardware and devices and software from. Ask them about what they can do additionally to help you secure your uh, office, which usually includes periodic software patches and updates. The second is to work on a training program for yourself uh, as a business owner and for your employees, for you to understand what does a phishing attack look like, which is somebody who is an imposter trying to look like your bank, how to sniff those out. If it's too good to be true, it probably is not because uh, there's no way you could win the lottery, uh, have the bank want to want to give you money or come in very, very negatively uh, asking you for, for validation of sensitive information. Some great tips and insights. Ayman Aitani, thank you so much for your time today.